Tamara, thank you so much. And music team, thank you and everyone for sharing your gifts and talents with us this morning. We continue the series following Jesus and this point looking at Jesus taking our burdens from us and lifting us up. We are in Luke chapter 13, verses 10 through 21. On a Sabbath, Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues. And a woman was there who had been crippled by a spirit for 18 years. She was bent over and could not straighten up at all. When Jesus saw her, he called her forward and said to her, Woman, you are set free from your infirmity. Then he put his hands on her, and immediately she straightened up and praised God. Indignant because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath, the synagogue leader said to the people, There are six days for work, so come and be healed on those days, not on the Sabbath. The Lord answered him, You hypocrites! Doesn't each of you on the Sabbath untie your ox or donkey from the stall and lead it out to give it water? Then should not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, and Satan has kept bound for 18 long years, be set free on the Sabbath day from what she was bound from? When he said this, all his opponents were humiliated, but the people were delighted with all wonderful things that he was doing. <clears throat> Jesus asked, What is the kingdom of God like? What shall I compare it to? It is like a mustard seed which a man took and planted in his garden. It grew and became a tree that birds perched in its branches. And again he said, What shall I compare the kingdom of God to? It is like the yeast that a woman took and mixed into 60 pounds of flour until it worked all through the dough. May the Lord bless his word to our hearts and minds this morning. Well, I invite you into this story this morning as we think about Jesus taking our burdens from us. Uh, this week, I volunteered for a food bank in Gary, Indiana. And uh, so I, I grew up there, just for those of you who had a, a letter from a gentleman that said I was doing essential work, so I was good to go for that. But in any case, I got up there, a very neat area in Indiana in this neighborhood, and uh, we were setting things up so we could do a drive through food bank, which is exactly what we did. And so one of the things we had to do is we set up these tables and cones and all this thing, and I had my personal protection equipment on, don't worry. And we were taking things out of this huge walk-in freezer to put on the table. And so I went up to the first load, and there was this big, you know, strapping young man. He's kind of on this small step stool, and he's got this big pile of boxes, and he's going to throw them down one at a time to us. And so it was my turn. And as I got up there, the box is pretty big, and as he was hoisting it, Towards me, I said, well, what's in it? And he said, turkey, as he threw it down. Now, I thought it was about this big. I thought, lunch meat, right? <laughs> and I caught it, and I'm serious. <laughs> like, turkey, and he went, yeah, four frozen turkeys. And, and so I uh, struggled over the table, and I guess it would have been so bad had I been expecting, you know, four frozen turkeys, but I was expecting lunch meat. So there's four 20, 25 pound frozen turkeys in each of those boxes. And man, I gotta tell you, for the first round of the day, my back was really, really hurting. And so I was hunched over a little bit. Now the next one, I was ready, but I was always already kind of softened up from that. But I wanted to make sure that I did due diligence. Some of the guys that I worked with, you know, they're you know, 20, 30 years old, it was a little easier than that, and I could have passed those. Uh, markers a little while ago, but in any case, I don't know if you ever had a moment in your life, uh, we were able to bless a lot of people, so uh, a lot of folks doing anything, but anyway, if you've ever had a moment in your life where you hurt your back and you were hunched over, do you, I mean, you know, everything that you do later on it is hard because you're hurting even if you're not hunched over, and so I think that's a good metaphor for us from a physical standpoint of what it looks like spiritually and emotionally for a lot of us right now. Uh, and a lot of us are weighed down with burdens and cares and stresses. And so I think this story takes on even more relevance today than it normally does. And so I'm going to walk back into the story. And so Jesus was in the Sabbath uh, for worship on the Lord's Day. And while he was there, he saw this woman who had been punched over bent over, we're told, for 18 years, which is, you know, amazing. And so it's important to say that not only was she hunched over, you can only imagine what that was like, you know, she was physically deformed, 
But along with that, you would have been an outcast from society. Many times when we look at disabled people, whatever this disability is, they're sort of pushed out. And many of our folks today have overcome those challenges. And I think we've become a more open and inclusive society. But at this time, she would have been pushed to the outside of the synagogue. Not only that, but from after going through all of that, she probably had some mental or emotional scars. Would you agree? Anytime you're pushed out like that, you feel the burden of that. And so she was burdened and stressed for a number of years, but Jesus saw her. Jesus saw her on the outskirts of the religious assembly, and Jesus went to her. And Jesus asked her about her situation, and then Jesus said, straighten up. And in fact, she was healed in that beautiful moment. And I can only imagine what that was like for her, who had been on the outskirts, and now she was on the inside. She had personal attention from the Lord. She was on the outside, I suppose, socially, and now you know, she was kind of in the center in some sense. But even more important, the physical ailment was healed, and I think also the psychological, the emotional, and the relational scars were healed as well. And, and so when I look at this story, I think first about our own burdens being lifted and how sometimes we have been weighed down. Maybe it's the pandemic right now. A lot of us are feeling you know, different kinds of emotional burdens. And it might be that we have lost a job or a loved one has lost a job. Uh, or it could be that we're temporarily furloughed. Uh, we have a lot of financial worries. It could be that we have loved ones who are in the hospital, uh, either from COVID-19 or something else. Or it could be that we've even lost loved ones. We've had folks who have lost family members. And so our hearts and prayers go out to them. But those kinds of things weigh us down. And sometimes just everyday family life because, you, you know, we're all together hurt a lot for people who, you, you know, uh, if you can get through this, your family is either going to be so much better or who's going to be at each other. And so we had to learn to find our spaces and places and a new rhythm to life as we rediscover that. And it's been a burden. It's been a stress. I think in this moment in worship, kind of look at it as a Sabbath blessing, a Sabbath moment where the Lord can look at us and say, you know, let me take that burden from you. Straighten up. I can... I can lift that burden from you. And so that's a beautiful picture of what Sabbath is. But that's not the end of the story. The religious leaders who were there saw Jesus and said, made this big announcement. Listen, listen, there's six other days other than the Sabbath day. You need to heal on those six days and not on the Lord's day. But Jesus looks at them and said, which one of you who has an ox or a donkey doesn't untie them and lead them to water. Oh, you hypocrites. You hypocrites. And I think, first of all, if you don't know what a hypocrite really is, the, the uh, background of that word is that it was actors in the Greek culture who would wear a mask and had a built-in megaphone. And so they could project and they could wear these masks. And I think in our own life, sometimes, you know, we have people with different kind of masks sort of posing to be something else, right? And that's not what faith is all about. We can be really transparent with the Lord. So Jesus is saying, take off your mask and, and quit shouting through a megaphone and be real in this moment. But I think there's something even deeper there because in this often overlooked moment where Jesus said, which of you has an ox or a donkey doesn't untie them and lead them to water so they can drink? I think there's a beautiful moment there. I think there's sort of a, a, a breakdown of maybe what it's like to be healed and blessed in the Sabbath. There's a Sabbath blessing metaphor there. And so the first thing is that, that we're untied, we're set free. I mean, have you ever noticed that God all through the Bible loves to set people free? I think about Joseph, who was in the, the, the uh, prison, and God set him free so he could be in the palace, second in command to Pharaoh. And I think uh, Moses, who set the Lord's people free from the injustice and slavery and bondage of Pharaoh in Egypt and crossed the Red Sea into eventually the promised land. God loves to set people free. And then we think in the New Testament scriptures where uh, in Acts we see Peter at one point and Paul at another point, several points, were in prison and God set them free. For Peter, the Lord sent an angel. And for the apostle Paul at one point, the Lord uh, had an earthquake and set Paul and Silas free from the Philippian jail. But then we see Jesus setting people free in different ways. We see Jesus healing the leper who was on the outskirts. We see this moment where Jesus sets this woman free from all of her burden. Her. We see the many moments that, that Jesus healed the man at the 
school of Bethesda and set him free uh, from an illness and when Jesus healed the blind man and set him free. And so God loves to set us free. And this morning, what has us tied up? What could God sort of set us free from in that moment that might make a whole difference in our our life and our outlook of faith and so many other kinds of things? And I just think it's a it's a beautiful moment. So what can God set us free from? And I think there's a, another blessing here, which is that there's this image of being refreshed, being restored, having this drink of water. And I think that's the other thing that that Sabbath blessing is about. Of course, the Lord can bless us on any other day other than the Sabbath, but on the Sabbath, especially we lean into that moment, and so we allow God to lift our burdens, right? And to heal us and to bless us and to restore us and to refresh us. I don't know if you ever had a moment where water felt like a really, really great miracle. And usually we, we take water for granted, right? And, and so in my old life, there's been a few moments like that, but I recall one moment where I was hiking in the Grand Canyon. It was in July because that was the only time that I could get off. And so I was hiking in the Grand Canyon in July, which was incredibly, incredibly hot. It was, uh, you know, around 100 degrees. I know people say there's no humidity, but it's 100 degrees. So I had lots of water, and I had to hike to Havasu Falls. So uh, a lot of folks know the other trails, but there's a trail to Havasu Falls that um, is basically a day hike through the desert. Right? So, and, and they even have a ranger there checking to make sure you have water. But I'm telling you, it's just like uh, unbelievable. So it's a spectacular journey as you go to the spectacular falls uh, along the Grand Canyon. And it's amazing because sometimes you go through caverns where there's this cool... Uh, stream going through there and uh, there'll be desert on both sides, but as the, where the stream is and where there's a bit of a shadow for most of the day, it's like like uh, blossoms. It's like you have desert and all of a sudden you have these uh, flowers. And they're almost tropical. And so it's beautiful. It's amazing. But it also reminds you that you really need water. So you keep hydrated, right? Keep drinking water. And so my water was running kind of low. Uh, the person I was hiking with, you know, her water was running like well, By the time we got there uh, to uh, the campgrounds there, it was time for a cool drink of water. And I'm telling you, they had this spring of water that you could drink from. It was just so amazing. It felt so good. And then, and then uh, you could swim. The Havasu Falls is just a, one of the most beautiful falls in the world. And you could swim in this little lake that's below the falls. And so that was just so refreshing and so wonderful. And I think that's a great image. Maybe we went Sabbath. Blessed and refreshment means to us. And so uh, we think about in our own life how we feel parched and dry sometimes from the desert of life that we're traveling through, kind of like a wilderness. We're going through that wilderness. And, and on Sabbath, blessing, God wants to restore us, God wants to untie us, and wants to set us free, but God also wants to help us to grow. And so uh, it's a beautiful moment. Now, Jesus inserts these two very short stories, these parables, these illustrations that really bring it into focus when it comes to that. And the first is, Jesus says, your faith is like a grain of mustard seed. That though it's the smallest seed in the garden, grows over time and becomes the largest tree in the garden where the birds can nest and rest in the branches. And so I see that as imagery, how that refreshment, that water helps us to grow spiritually. And, and so when you feel like you're stunted and, and uh, going through a lot of difficulty, not only refreshes us, but it helps us to, to grow. And as we grow, even sometimes through the adversity and challenges of life as individuals and as families and as family of faith, that God will see us through. If we allow that Sabbath blessing to refresh us and nourish us and to help us to grow. And then I see that it is where Jesus said, it's like the woman who has some yeast and puts it into 60 pounds of flour. And it leavens the whole bunch, so it's, it's good. Now, if you kind of look at that imagery, because I never really noticed it quite as much in this context, is that it's 60 pounds of flour. Now, many of you know that I'm trying to grow one of my New Year's resolutions is to be a better cook. And so, um, you know, I'm usually putting in a cup of flour or two cups of flour. 60 pounds of flour, by the way, can make a lot of bread. Would you agree? So I don't know what Jesus was thinking. Maybe she's going to make bread for the entire neighborhood, or my favorite, maybe cinnamon rolls. 
Man, if there's nothing better when you're going through difficulty, it's for me, coffee and a cinnamon roll will cure a lot of things. Or make life better, right? But what I know about her from that is she wanted to be a blessing to others, right? It wasn't just to keep to yourself, it was to share with others. And even the imagery of the mustard seed becomes what? A blessing to the birds of the air. And so we grow, but we're also able to bless others. And I think as we go through this trial of this pandemic or anything else that we go through, we grow, but we're also able to be a blessing to others in ways that we may not even have imagined. So how can you be a blessing to others? And in being a blessing, since we discovered some great things, even on Tuesday when I volunteered up at that uh, Sojourner Truth food bank in Gary, Indiana, even though my back was hurting, I must tell you, at the end of the day, see so many folks who have been in need uh, to leave and just be so thankful for being able to make it through another week or two. Uh, it just meant a lot. And, and sometimes we had a little conversation that was a blessing. And sometimes, I can tell you, I was blessed by that as well as, as them. So uh, you and I can share that the church has been donating for our food bank so that we can be a blessing to others in, in the local food bank. Uh, it may not be that. It may even be a phone call. It may be an email or a text. Some way that you can take this moment of difficulty and be a blessing to others. There's a wonderful story that I love, a true story of Harriet Tubman, you may know, uh, who lived in the late 1800s and she was an abolitionist. She had been a slave in the South and had found her freedom through the Underground Railroad and then became a person who advocated not only to free the slaves, but also led much, many uh, people out of slavery through the North through the Underground Railroad. And she relates one time in, in her memoirs that she was leading a group of 11 slaves who had been enslaved and were on this trek north and there were folks who were hunting them down. And so they had, in the middle of the night, they had to kind of um, lay low in this kind of wet, swampy region while people were looking for them and the fear that was going through uh, her heart and her mind and all of her emotions but at one point, she looked over and she saw this white man who caught her eye and had a key in his hand. And he just put his finger to his lips and put the key down on the ground and then pointed to a bar and he left. Well, later, in the middle of the night when everyone had left other than those slaves, uh, she went and she found that key and she unlocked the barn door that he had pointed to. And in there was this huge... A barrel of water with a note on it that said, listen, I am a Christian Quaker and this water is here to bless and strengthen you for your journey. And she said, what a, what a difference that made to her. And we may not have something quite as bold as that, or maybe God will open the door for us to be that bold, but sometimes in the simple way of sharing a glass of water, we become part of the Sabbath blessing to other people. So how might we be a blessing to others today, uh, to our family members, to our neighbors, to our church members, whatever it is that we can do, I know that God can open the door that we can be part of the Sabbath blessing. So today, whatever we're going through, whatever has us burdened, whatever has us weighed down, look at this image of this woman who had been hunched over and burdened and ostracized been outcast for some 18 years. I think of Jesus setting him free. Now in closing, there's just an interesting note here because some scholars will note that there's only one other point in scripture where that 18 number is used. Some people really focus on some of these kinds of details. And that other place in scripture is actually in Judges, where the Israelites had been in this moment where they were being oppressed and uh, had these uh, great injustices heaped upon them for 18 years. And then God sent armies to liberate them. And so as Jesus looked at those religious leaders, he was thinking of them and said, listen, your own history teaches you that at a moment when you were oppressed and when you were weighed down, God sent someone to set you free. And the Sabbath ought to be about that. The Sabbath and our faith ought not to be a burden, it ought to be a blessing. And sometimes as people, we take our, our moments and we sort of weigh new stones on the next generation and faith becomes a, a burden rather than a blessing. But Jesus wants to set us free. 
There's a story by the great Danish philosopher Kierkegaard. And he tells the story of this man who was going to the big city of Copenhagen to have a suit made by this famous tailor by the name of Hans the Tailor. And he heard all kinds of great things about Hans the Tailor, and so he traveled this long distance on a train, and he got there, went to the tailor's place, and was measured for a suit, and stayed overnight, and picked up the suit. When he tried the suit on, he had to pull and tug and contort his body in all kinds of ways to fit into the suit, but because it was made by Hans the Tailor, this famous tailor, he contorted his body and then left. He was on the way home and sitting on the train, and one of the fellow travelers noticed him and said, I, I noticed your suit. It's just an amazing suit. And this person said, well, yeah, it was made by Hans the Tailor. The person said, well, that's amazing. I heard that Hans the Tailor was a great tailor, but I've never seen him make a suit with someone as deformed as you. <laughs> and Kierkegaard notes that, you know, sometimes we have made our face such that we have contorted our lives in a way that God never meant us to be. To impress someone that God never meant us for us to impress. And you and I are meant to be set free by our faith, not burdened down by it. And so this morning, wherever you are in life, be set free by God's blessing. Be untied and be refreshed in new ways. Jesus said, Take my yoke upon you, for my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Amen. Let's close with this thought. One time, uh, Melanchthon was a disciple of Luther's, the great reformer. And uh, they were famous for debating all kinds of theological and philosophical truths. Among them, communion and the presence of God and how that worked, and the omnipotence of God, and all these great kinds of things in the Reformation. One Sunday afternoon, Melanchthon walked into Luther's office and said, Mark, let's, what do you say, we debate the governance of the universe and all of creation, how God made that work. And Martin Luther looked at Melanchthon and said, listen, Melanchthon, how about this? How about we go fishing and leave the governance of the universe to God? Amen. We all have blessings and burdens. God wants to lift the burdens and bless us on the Sabbath. Know this, that God can set us free and God can refresh us and we can be a blessing to others. We join me in prayer. Lord, as we think about some of the things that we are going through right now, life often seems to be filled with stresses and burdens. There are almost too many to name. But you know what they are. Some are physical and some are emotional, some are relational, but they're very real. But we know that you are a Lord who sets people free and refreshes them. So this morning we pray that you would just lift our burdens from us and help us to share that burden with you, knowing that you have the power to see us through. And your presence will guide us and refresh us along life's way. That we can love and serve you and love and serve others. In Christ's name, and all those people said,